Hey guys, Shaki here bringing you guys a new video and I'm actually using Sylvans today. This is a very interesting archetype in my opinion. Uh, I looked up a deck list, I kind of liked it, uh, I copied it and then I changed a few cards in it to uh, suit what I wanted to do a little bit more. And uh, I think it's really, really good so I'm going to bring you this and then a few replays. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So we got Sylvan Hermitry which is going to be your number one card. You're going to want to get him out as soon as you possibly can and you can get him out really easily. Once per turn, you can excavate the top card of your deck, which is what this this archetype is all about, if you don't know. Um, and if it is a plant and you send it to the graveyard, draw one card, otherwise put it on the bottom. When this card is excavated, you can look at top three cards of your, up to the top three cards. I don't know why you'd pick one or two, or you, it doesn't make sense. But uh, And then you can place them on top of your deck in any order. So it, it's really good to use. Um, you can set up combos off of it if you do end up milling it. Um, I'm only running two. Most of the Sylvan decks you'll see running three, but I don't think running three is a good idea. Um, then we have Sylvan Sage Koya. I think is how you say is, is that a D? No. It looks like a D up there, but it's not. Um, when he sent, when a Sylvan monster is sent to the graveyard, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. So it's just, it's really, really strong. Uh, if you can just mill a Sylvan off of one of your other guys, you can special summon him from your hand and get a 2600 attacker 7 star, which is pretty important, out uh, for free. So um, you can excavate top card of your deck, and if it's a plant monster, you can send it to the graveyard. Otherwise, place it on the bottom of your deck. If this card is uh, excavated from your deck, you can add a Sylvan Speller Trap card from your graveyard. Of course, we're only running one, so we're only going to get the, the Sylvan Charity ever. But, I mean, it's worth it. Uh, I mean, any effect that can activate when you send it to the graveyard from the top of your deck is good anyways. Then we have two Flower Knights, which is just going to allow us to summon and excavate. And then if he is sent to the graveyard, we can get um, one Sylvan Monster from our deck and put it on... Or, yeah, from our deck and put it on top of our deck. Which is really good because it can set up a lot of combos if you have a, a Sage Koya out there or you have a Hermitry. And then we have Sylvan Marsh... Uh, Marshall Leaf, <laughs> I think Marshall Leaf, yeah, that's what it looks like it says, I just don't like the two L's together, it makes it look weird, um, when this card is normal summoned, you can pick either one or two, you're always going to pick two, I don't know why they give you the option, and then you can uh, excavate that many cards, and if he's excavated actually, you get to destroy one face up, you could target one monster in the field, doesn't he have to be face up, and destroy that target, that's all he does, so he's really good. You never want to draw this guy, and I seem to draw him every single time. So if you could ever point him back on top of your deck or something like that, definitely do it. Uh, we got two Lone Fire Blossoms, which should be limited, but I don't know why it's at two now, especially in this deck. So you can go Lone Fire to get Lone Fire to get something else. Get both Lone Fires in your graveyard so you can combo off with uh, Fertilizer later on. But, um, yeah, he just allows you to get out your Hermitry first turn if you want to and start drawing cards and start getting stuff in your graveyard. So, uh, one Dandelion, just because if it goes to your graveyard, you get two dudes. You're going to be synchroing with this deck. So, it's always good to have some guys out there, especially when you're running the Fragrant Storm, uh, which is going to allow you to sack one of your tokens to draw two cards. So, uh, Sylvan uh, Kuma Mushroom. Uh, Kum Rush Room Mo, I guess. Um, yeah, these names, man. Yu Gi Oh's running out of names. So uh, when he flips face up, you can pick one to five. You're always going to pick five. And then you can excavate all the plant monsters from that into the graveyard, get all their effects, and the rest go to the bottom. But uh, if he's sent from the deck to the graveyard, you can actually destroy a spell or trap card on the field. So you definitely want to mill him, but he is also good if you do draw him. So there's no disadvantage. Spore, just really good. You can get back from graveyard for, an, uh, you can get an 8 tuner. And then you can do that with a 2 to get an, um, to get a 10, which you can get Leo. So it's really good. All the combos, we have a lot of different star combinations. So we can actually get quite a few synchros, though. We're not running a whole ton. We're running... Uh, quite a few XYZs too, so there's a lot of options in the stack as you will see in the games. We got the Peas Keeper, <laughs> which I think is a very good name. Um, when it's normal summon, you can excavate normal or special summon, so it's good. And then when he's sent to the grave, you can actually special summon a um, Sylvan from your graveyard, a level 4 lower plant Sylvan, I guess, or plant monster, so it's any plant monster. Usually you're just going to get himself back to get his effect or something like that, or you know, if you have something better. 
you you can definitely go for that. Um, I mean, if you have a spore sitting in there, or you have the glow up bulb. We have one uh, Sylvan Cherub Sprout, which I don't think is really that good of a card, so I'd only run one of them. Um, so, yeah, you you can special summon one level one plant monster from your deck. It's it's not very good. I don't like it. You're just gonna get Princess Sprout. Which is gonna uh, has two good effects. You contribute to excavate a card, which is fine. Sometimes you're just gonna do that turn one. Just get this card in your graveyard, and if this card is excavated from the top of your deck, then you can um, special summon it with a level from one to eight. So it's gonna allow to combo off of everything in your deck. That's why we're running three. It's just because it can put itself back on top too. If you um, if you excavate a sprout monster, uh, no. Um, when you tribute this card, excavate top, send it to the graveyard. Then you can place one sprout monster from your graveyard on top of your deck. That's what it does. So you can put it, you can tribute, put it back on top of your deck. If you have something like Hermitry, then you can go for it, get an eight. You can X Y Z summon, get you know, you can get a high protector or something like that. So then glow up bulb is just going to be able to allow you to sink twice. It's really good. One for one is going to allow you to either get glow bulb or you're going to get the spore. You're never going to really get anything else because there's not really a reason to get either any of the other ones. It's just to set up some combos and also to ditch a card from your hand that you might not want in your hand. Um, Regeki is just going to be able to destroy your opponent's monsters, obviously. Soul Charge is going to allow you to play a million monsters in one turn and just wipe their board and do some crazy stuff. Okay, I'm running Fragrance Storm over the uh, upstart goblin i don't want to give him a thousand i don't really like our upstart goblin and i think this card is potentially better you contribute one of your crappy um plant monsters that you don't want out on the field anyways and then you could draw two cards you have a potential of drawing two cards so if you have something like dandelion in your hand you have no way of getting rid of it in this deck so you play it out you use the fragrance storm you know, you get to draw cards, you get two monsters, you can use another Fragrance Storm, you can draw potentially two more cards, and it's just, in my opinion, that's way better than Upstart Goblin. Uh, Foolish Burial is just going to allow you to ditch stuff like Dandelion, so you can use the Fragrance Storm, or you can Sink, you know, it, it's just a ton of things there. We got the Sylvan Charity, which is going to allow us to draw three cards, put two back on top of the deck, sets up a lot of combos. One Mystical Space Typhoon just to get rid of those pesky cards. I'm thinking about taking out one Magic uh, Miracle Fertilizer to put in another Mystical Space Typhoon. Because you don't really need three. I don't use these as often as I thought I would. And um, yeah, so I might go ahead and do that. But the uh, Miracle Fertilizer is really good. You can just keep stacking plant monsters on top of each other. But in this deck, you don't really need to. Because the plant monsters you're usually going to get are ones that are going to go away at the end of the turn anyway. So this is just going to get destroyed. But it, it definitely is a good special summon card. Uh, we have the Reckless Greeds, which is going to just allow us to draw a bunch of cards. This deck has a lot of draw power, so there's really no disadvantage to run Reckless Greed, especially if you got Hermitry or you got some uh, Fragrance Storms. And then we're going to run two Dragon Souls. Um, and the reason is just so we can sync up for the the Baxia. So Baxia is really good. Also, it's, it's a Call of the Haunted with no disadvantage. It puts them in defense mode, so it's slightly better in this deck because you can get things like the dandelion in defense mode instead of having to take damage for having it face up. So there's really no disadvantage to running the, the Dragon Souls here. Um, so we're going to run one Ghost Trick Duel in just in case. This card's actually all right. It can half of the attack, which can allow you to run things over. We got Big Eye. You know, sevens we're not going to really get too, too often. But when we do, we're definitely going to try to go for Big Eye first. And then uh, Aurea. Aurea is really solid. Then we got... Uh, Elsie, who is going to be your number one card. Oh, I took my thing off him. He's going to be your number one card you're going to go for. You're going to go for him just for the fact that you can just search for the top card, pretty much. You can just put in whatever random name. Or if you actually want that top card, then he is really solid. Um, but you're usually just going to fake out and then return a card from their side of the field back to the, their hand in XYZ, usually. Uh, Ferdinand, he's just really good. We're going to have Formula Synchron, which is going to allow us to draw cards, and then we can sync up again. We're going to have Armades, who's just going to stop them from activating things. Black Rose just blow up the field. We have uh, this guy. I, d I don't really know why he's in. I think I'm going to take him out for a 6, because I definitely need a 6 in this deck. Stardust Dragon is just going to stop from dis being destroyed. Baxi, I explained, just to return cards. We have Crimson Blader, just to stop them from special summoning. And then Leo. So, um... 
I really like this deck. I think it's really interesting. We'll get into some games here. We're going to start up against Gears first. Um, so I didn't know what I was facing, obviously. So I'm just going to play that, and I'm going to pick two, get a card to the graveyard. Uh, I'm just going to pick four. I'm going to get the glow bulb in there, and I'm just going to go out for Stardust first turn. I got two Reckless Greeds, and I have a Stardust out. I feel like I'm in a really good position with the Soul Charge. I can get all those back and sync for something else. I'm going to just go back up to five cards on the first turn. So it's going to be really solid. And you can see the two cards that he has out there aren't very scary. So I'm not concerned. He's going to go for the pot duality. He's going to reveal uh, some pretty good cards. But he's going to go for the ancient gear knight. And he has the united we stand. All I have is that. So it's not going to do any, any good for us. He's going to trap stun my dragon soul. So now it's just going to be a card sitting there not doing anything. But I'm just going to go for the soul charge and be able to sync up for something and uh i'm going to use the effects first which is going to switch summon him i'm going to get black rose i'm just going to blow up the field and play the Mur miracle fertilizer uh and i'm going to be perfectly okay with that he's going to set ancient gear i'm kind of stuck here so i'm glad i did the the fertilizer that's going to allow me to throw him away which is going to allow me to special summon this off of the tribute so um, that's really good. I was really happy with that. But he goes for a Dark Hole, which is going to get me another one because I had two in my hand. I'm going to get the Fragrance. I don't need the Fragrance right now. So I'm just going to attack for 26 uh, and see if he has anything. And he doesn't. He just ends his turn again. I'm going to be able to play the Peapod. I'm going to be able to use his effect. I'm going to be able to tribute him, get a Regeki, so I know I'm in a really good position. This is why I like it better than Upstart. I didn't have to give him a 1,000 life. I lost a pretty crappy monster that I could have used anyways. So I'm just going to go for the Blind Sylvan um, draw card and for charity, and I'm not going to get anything, so they all go back on top. But he just has that, so um, he's just going to kill himself there. So we're going to get the victory pretty easily. Next, we're going to go up against Nick's uh, uh, Gravekeepers. Make sure you guys check out his link down below of him facing me with his Gravekeepers against my uh, Doo Doo deck. Um, uh, so he, he's going to go Mystical Space Typhoon. I'm just going to chain the Reckless Greed, draw the cards. I didn't really want to do that. And I'm just going to go for the Charity. I'm going to go for the glow, the not the glow up bulb yeah the uh the lone fire blossom i'm gonna be able to get out hermitry i'm not gonna be able to activate his effect he's gonna get the flip summon guy i'm just gonna attack it i might as well put that back in my hand i'm gonna be able to set that and i can just get something good next turn too but uh of course i don't know he has a regeki i'm gonna get the lone fire back to my hand uh, i'm just gonna activate it and then I'm going to mill a bunch of stuff. There we go. I'm going to be able to destroy his back row, but it is not what I wanted. There, I'm going to get the Hermitry out. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to get his effect off. And he has something set. And because he didn't flip it, I figure that it is something that I can't really deal with. I'm going to get um, his, his Mirror Force into the grave. I'm going to be able to attack for 2700 direct, which is going to be really good. He's going to regeki. He's going to go for 1800. Of course, he does not have out his Necro Valley, so it's not going to be. If it's still affected by spell and trap cards. I'm going to be able to uh, get rid of this guy to destroy him, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to put down the Reckless Greed and just be fine with that. And of course, he's going to draw both of his monarchs in his hand. I'm going to go out with her again and mill off that. I'm going to get to Special Summon Lone Fire for my grave. I'm going to be able to activate him and get him out. I'm going to draw two cards. Just activate the Miracle Fertilizer because I forgot that I Normal Summoned, so I was going to activate it. He's going to get the Flip Guy, and uh, that's really annoying for me. I'm going to get back out Hermitry. I'm just going to attack now. Uh, he's going to get Return to my hand. Hermitry is going to activate. I'm going to get back my Charity. Which is all good and fine. I'm going to get the special summon him. And then I'm just going to end my turn. I have two Fragrant Storms. He's going to get Necro Valley and just end his turn. And now we're going to face up against Hermits. And I'm going to tell you guys what. I hate Hermits. So <laughs> here I'm going to go for the one for one. I'm going to get her out. I'm going to use the Fragrance to try to draw. Which is going to allow me to special summon him. And I'm going to set a card. Here he was like, would you be mad if I took your creature and I said, not at all. So he goes for the creature swap and takes it. I am perfectly fine. That's going to go back to his hand. I don't really care. I'm going to be able to get Spore, use Mir Miracle Fertilizer to get Hermitry back. Um, 
and just be able to sync up for the Leo here. And I know Hermits can't really do anything against Leo, so I don't see him being able to win this at this point. Uh, he can't target me with his XYZs. He can't do anything, so he is just going to quit. So I didn't care that he took that. Now we're going to do Sylvans versus Nurse Burn. This is against Nick again. Uh, we're on his side. So he's going to go for Car Car D. He's just going to draw some cards. He set one card, uh, which was a Threatening Roar. I'm going to use the Sylvan. I'm going to just ditch this, get the tree. I'm going to be able to do three and put them in the order I need them in. Uh, he's going to use the Pod Duality, which he is actually going to just pick the Scarecrow, I believe. And uh, he's going to go for Car Car D, but I'm just going to return the Hermit Tree. That's the reason why I did this in the first place. Um... So I'm going to get to play her again. I'm going to ditch her. I'm going to be able to destroy a back row, which is going to be that threatening roar, and he's just going to activate it. But I get to get her effect. I'm going to bring her out, XYZ for this, activate his effect again. I'm going to get him, which is going to allow me to special summon another monster. I'm going to be able to destroy another one of his cards. I'm going to tribute her to the effect of that to draw two cards. And I feel like I'm in a really good position here. He doesn't have any back rows, and that's really bad for the um for nurse burn so i'm going to be able to get charity back and return the card back to his hand which is going to be another threatening roar so i'm going to use another charity i'm going to put a bunch of cards back i'm going mystical space typhoon and then since i can't attack anyways i might as well go for a synchro here i got the mushroom guy back on accident uh i tried to, i meant to unclick him but i didn't I'm going to use the Reckless Greed to draw some more. He's going to actually give me the Lava Golem, not getting rid of my tree, which is perfectly fine because it's going to allow me to special summon with that. I'm going to be able to get Leo out, and he's going to just Mystical Space Typhoon that card over there, but I'm going to get another Hermit Tree, and there is really nothing he can do at this point. He is going to use the Scarecrow, and um, I don't know why he didn't use it on the first attack, but that's fine. So he's just going to set Nurse because he really has nothing that he can do. I'm going to use Fertilizer. He's going to use that and uh, do 3,000 damage to me. And here I was like, oh great, you have the last card. But of course, his last card is actually Life Equalizer, which he should have used and then did 3,000, huh? Because then he would have won. So Next time, Nick. Next time. You had me. So we're going to go Saddle Our Knights now. And I start off with a pretty bad hand. I'm going to go for the charity and not get anything. Now I'm just sad I didn't set. So I'm like, great. Now I'm stuck with that card on top of my deck. Uh, but he goes with card destruction because he's using a very interesting set on here. So he's going to Mystical Space Typhoon, my Mystical Space Typhoon. Let me draw two cards, putting me in a way better position than I was at the beginning. I didn't need three Miracle Fertilizers. This is the reason why I want to get rid of one. So now he's just going to build up this huge field. And I am like, great. Here we go. Now he's going to do some crazy stuff. He's going to beat me. He goes for Lava Chain so he can put some stuff. But he just ditched uh, Level Up. I'm going to be able to mill five cards and do some stuff. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I actually get to destroy an attack position monster. So I do kill him. And I put... Uh, hermit tree on top of my deck on accident because i thought i was doing something else i thought i milled a different card but i didn't so i'm just going to activate her she, he's going to use reckless greed i'm going to actually mill regeki which really sucks and now i'm stuck with two mir miracle fertilizers out there he's going to go for Dany, i think it's called he's going to go for the card that returns back to the hand but can't attack if he uses that effect and i'm perfectly okay with that because i do have the soul charge and i can kill him this turn so I'm just going to activate her again. He gets another Reckless Greed, and I'm going to be able to look at the top three. I'm going to put her back on top so I can draw her again just in case I need her. Um, oh, yeah, so I can mill her here and get her back. That's that's why I did it. That's right. So I'm going to be able to special summon all these cards. I'm going to be able to use this effect, which uh, I just picked a random card, <laughs> so <laughs> it was fine. I got him back just so I can use effect and get this guy just in case he attacks. I can have the attack. I had nothing else. He's going to discard two of my cards in my hand so I can draw two cards, which I was perfectly fine with. He's going to get this guy back. He's going to use a bunch of cards and start leveling this thing up, but his battle phase is already done. And then he goes into a worse card than that last one. And I was like, okay, I can just return whatever back to your hand. You understand this concept, right? So I just return it back to his hand, destroys all the guys. I'm going to be able to special summon a bunch of dudes. 
I'm going to be able to get Glow Bulb and get Crimson Knight. And I'm just going to kill the Spore so I can get the effect. Get that back out. I'm going to kill that. I'm going to be able to draw another card. Use Foolish Burial. Uh, make it so he can't do anything, and then I'm just going to attack for a bunch of damage. He has no cards in his hand. I know he can't do anything because he can't draw, and he is just going to quit. So, And now, the best game, in my opinion, that I have had with the Sylvan deck. Uh, I hope I'm on my side. I can't tell, but I didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I don't, I don't run, run that. Um, so, yeah, he, he runs this card, which I've never seen, and he runs Royal Decrees in the deck. But uh, first turn, I'm going to be able to get out Hermitry. And I didn't know what this guy was running at this point, so I'm just going to get out him also. Uh, I'm going to be able to get Dandelion's effect, which is pretty interesting because I do have the Fragrance, which is going to allow me to draw two cards, and I can get the Glow Up Bulb, which means I can go get the Stardust um, just as a just-in-case card. I don't really want him destroying anything I have. So he's going to mill a bunch of stuff. He's going to activate that effect, which means I can use the Stardust negating that effect, making me look like a smart guy. So uh, Stardust is going to come back. I have the Hermitry, the Stardust. He's going to get a pretty good hand here. He's going to go for the one the one for one Soul Charge here. Since he can't really do too much else, else he's going to, to get rid of that. He's just going to keep milling a bunch of stuff. It's going to allow me to get this guy out because a Sylvan did go to the graveyard. He's going to get big guy. He's going to take control of that, but he cannot attack. He goes out for that, and here I was like, oh, great. What am I going to do? But then uh, I remembered I can do a bunch of stuff now because I got the perfect cards that I needed. But I'm going to be able to special summon that, which is going to, you know, mess up a bunch of stuff. But I'm going to be perfectly fine, because I can get this, which means I can return the big eye back to his hand, which is going to stop him from doing anything. And I mill the card to destroy a face-up monster, or destroy a monster in general, and I am actually going to be able to win. So I had the perfect mill. Sylvan versus Sylvan goes three turns. Pretty good match. It was definitely back and forth, even though it was so short. Um... But yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed those videos. I'm working on a few more decks. As you can see, LV up here. LV, you you don't even want to see LV versus Burning Abyss yet. You're not ready for uh, versus Necroz. I call it Necroz. It might be Necroz. I don't care. It's Necroz to me. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit long because I had a lot of replays. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys later.